Hello everyone, how's it going? In this video, I wanted to go ahead and show you how to make this scene right in front of you. This is mostly a beginner's tutorial, and we are going to be mainly focusing on the environment and lighting. As always, we are starting with a base mesh to avoid the time of repetitive modeling. Now, if this is interesting to you, feel free to follow along and you will find all of the necessary assets linked down below. We are starting with a base mesh from the 3D warehouse made by SAQU Studio, two-story house modern contemporary. Link down below. Import it as a Colada or as a SketchUp file using the SketchUp importer add-on. Doesn't really matter as long as you get a nice result. Now I already did the cleanup, but I will be just going ahead and showing it right in front of you. You want to go ahead and select the main object. Press Shift L, select link by material, and Control J. Do the same thing for similar materials and join them if needed. This is mostly to get a single object with a single material. That way it's much better to work with. Now for the materials, really simple as well. Mostly using the principal BSDF, no crazy setups at all. The metal frames are just regular gray metal shader with a noise texture. Feel free to copy the exact same slider values, the color ramp profile, and using a multiply math node in order to dial down the values in a more fine tune. For the rocks, I'm literally just using all of the textures that came with the model. It's a real nice texture combination, although a bit low resolution, but really useful as well. The glass, really simple as well, regular glass workflow. And the wood, using the same wood texture that came in with the same color map plugged into the roughness and into the bump. Same thing goes for the concrete. If you want more details about this, feel free to let me down below. I might make a full video only talking about materials. Now for the beam that we have right in front of us, I have used the same albedo map as a displacement map and I will show you how to do that in a second. Make sure that the geometry subdivide it until it looks more or less similar at the subdivision surface and add the displacement using the exact same texture. Go to the sampling and play with the scale. This will kind of bl blur out the texture and make it usable. So we have made a displacement without having a gray scale color displacement standalone map that is you know this is really repetitive i'm just fast forwarding this i really don't want to show this in every single video as we have already redigested this a couple of times prior to this adding our camera with the same workflow again rotating it on the x-axis and positioning it 1.7 meters off of the ground so around average eye level for the focal length we are going for something around 28 26 24 you could go ahead and try with 35 but in my case i like that slight bit of distortion that a wider field of view kind of give us play with the shift y as well to avoid any distorted verticals and that's our camera setup. Let's go ahead and use cycles with the GPU computer as well set up correctly. For our lighting, spoiler alert, we are going to be using the sky texture that we have used in almost every video that we worked on. It is, in my opinion, the best option for daylight exterior lighting. much more control and usually gives a nicer result than most HDRIs unless the HDRI is a really high quality HDRI and you absolutely know how to use HDRIs sky texture usually is more than enough for the base lighting especially if you are planning to go ahead and model the surrounding environment so you have some nice reflections and shadows as well now for the ozone set it to 4 for the altitude set it to 5000 6000 in order to get a bluer horizon and play with the sun elevation and rotation
I like to use AGX for the most part. It gives nicer colors and kind of reminds me of how V-Ray looks like by default. Now for the grass, I'm using a simple grass preset that comes with the botanic add-on. It literally just uses a regular old school particle system, so no geometry nodes for you to fill around with, unfortunately. But it does the job just as well, in most cases that is. Add the particle system to the object that you need, duplicate it, and play with the number. You can go ahead as well and play with everything else, but the rotation and scale already come set up correctly with the basic particle sample setup that came in with it. Now we have our cut grass. We need some more assets, obviously. Personally, I like to add shrubs next, for the most part. I'm using Bag of Pie in this case, as well as the Botanic add-on. But before that, you want some shadows. So I'm literally adding just a regular tree. It doesn't matter the quality of the tree, as long as it casts some really nice shadows. You can, you can substitute this by using just a regular plane with the alpha map of the texture, but that doesn't give us as much control as we want, typically. Now, if the shadows are too much, select the leaves by going to the material and pressing select on the leaf mesh. Go ahead and select individual origins and scale them slightly. That way you can decide how thick you want your, your shadows to be and how much light you want seeping through. Now at this point, I'm just using the backup pie assets in order to add some really nice shrubs, some really nice flowers, and just all around populating the scene with some really nice assets at the same time. Now, you might be wondering why am I not showing you how to make a different lighting setup. Now, the simplest answer is typically the deep blue sky is usually the best in terms of reach for the most part. And also most clients prefer to go ahead and have a deep blue sky sun. Personally, this is not my favorite lighting. My favorite lighting is a regular overcast sky setup with a nice golden color sun with a very high directionality so this doesn't allow to have really dark shadows unless you have a lot of contact with the ground or an intricate sort of design but it does give enough contrast to give this scene a very calm and nice mood in general i will be showing you how to do this in the future hopefully as you could see, I'm just adding some assets, you know, the more time you spend, the better it will look. This is a really repetitive process, but a really fun one at that as well. You need to have references. I'm working here without references. This is why some of my YouTube tutorials, I mean, most of them don't look as good as my scenes that I share on Instagram, and that is normal. This scene took me around 30 minutes with cleaning up the geometry my own project, my commercial project, or my personal projects take more than 10 times that amount. So I might go ahead and spend five hours on a simple exterior shot. That is at least. Now, as you could see, I am selecting the house here, going ahead and duplicating it and merging it. So it is a single object. Make sure to shade flat and just position it where you want it to be. Go ahead and press Alt-D to duplicate it. This is nicer and uh, way less heavy on the actual VRAM and RAM. Since it makes an instance instead of a regular duplicate. So when you apply changes to one mesh, it does it to its other instance. Just position them where they make sense. You can go ahead and use any other house model. In this case, you know, it 
looks different enough from the different facades. This is why I just use it. If you have followed my previous tutorials as well, you can go ahead and duplicate the same exact meshes that we have worked on previously and just add them here. Now I'm just adding some trees from the bag of iron. You can add trees from the shaker. You can add trees from max tree. They are the nicest in my opinion, as well as every motion, or maybe just go ahead and make your own trees. Just use whatever you have access to. I am working on a master class that will mostly feature only free assets. So no paid add-ons and no paid assets as well. So you can follow it without spending a single penny. As you can see, I'm just playing around with a U saturation value of these trees in order for them to blend correctly with the rest of the scene. This is a big mistake that most people use. They literally use the same trees that come with this with a certain pack without adjusting them. Now, a lot of these come from different ecosystems. This is wrong by itself. You want your vegetation to be consistent at least. But in this case, we just don't mind. Since we only want a nice image, we don't care as much about the accuracy. You will be caring for the accuracy once you are making a extremely important project or a project that would be your hero asset or a hero uh, image in your portfolio. Or if it's a really big client that really cares about the accuracy and has a background in design or landscaping. As you can see, I'm also when adding these trees, I'm thinking about how much shadows it's going to cast and where these shadows will be. I want the main focus to be at the gate and also at the upper area of the house since these areas are the most interesting. You can also add as much as it you want, just make sure that it doesn't look too cluttered, which is why you see me every now and then deleting some assets that I have added previously. As you would tell, I make my scenes without prior preparation, so I'm just kind of showing you the how I would go about doing these things if I have around 30 minutes to 40 minutes of time. Now I want some shadows on the houses on the back, which is why I'm adding a plane and playing with it. I'm going to revisit it in a second, but this plane is literally just a placeholder. I'm also adding a material and playing with the alpha. So I decide how much light can pass through this exact shadow. Playing with the sun intensity, I will be increasing it even more in a bit. Now after that, we want a different sky to see. Now I'm using a, I think it's called the Rosendahl planes from Polyhaven. You will find its link down below as well. And plugging it into a background node. Pressing Ctrl T and kind of just playing with the Z rotation until I get something similar to the directionality of the sun in my previous sky setup. This will make sure that the clouds don't look off place and look more interesting. As you can see, it's really nice HDRI. It has a really nice cloud setup. And it's, I mean, it's usually better than going ahead and using a simple image. But you can go ahead and do that in Photoshop as well. Personally, I prefer to do everything in Blender and only just some minor touching up in Photoshop later on, mostly colors. So add a light path node as camera and plug it into the mixator between our previous sky texture and our new HDRI. I have spent a fair bit of time explaining this in almost every prior video that we have worked on. So feel free to revert back to that if you want more details about this. As you can see, I'm just playing around, adding a hue saturation node, maybe up in the saturation, but if you want a deeper blue sky, just make sure that you don't go overboard with it. 
or it will look out of place. I'm also making use of the false color view transform as well since that is quite nice feature to dedicate where we have overexposed areas adjust your lighting according to that or maybe just play around with the exposure which is what I did here we typically want a little bit of overexposed areas in this sort of lighting but not too much we don't want overblown details just disappearing As you see, I'm now adding a bit of sun intensity and lowering the strength since I didn't like the extremely blue shadows that we have here. It's typically more realistic to not have absolutely dark shadows, but you know, who cares about realistic as long as we want a certain effect. I mean, that effect can be done with adding some more contrast in post-production, but as I mentioned, I prefer to do everything in my CG software. A lot of people keep telling me, what type of photoshop do you do for your scenes now honestly all of the colors come from my lighting i have had people ask me if they could go ahead and buy my lots for my scenes over on instagram but i told them what lots are you talking about i do not use any lots they ask how do you do that how do you add halation well it all has to do with the lighting now you could go and experiment with more contrast personally keep it the way as is and just go ahead and use something like Lightroom if you want to do that we already added a lot of contrast in our lighting setup but you can always play with that again now as you could see we have a really nice result in less than 30 minutes if you follow this Please feel free to send it over to me on Instagram. And you can find me on my personal profile, which is called Alternavision Studio. I answer everyone in there, in time, obviously. If not, feel free to go ahead and message us on our Discord. And we will be making sure to give you any form of answer that you might need. So, hope you enjoyed this. Take care.